Hello everybody. Anybody new to my channel, my name is Jeff and welcome to my little machine shop here. Last week we did an updated review and, and maintenance on the lathe. She's still clean. I've actually cleaned it one more time since then. I used it uh, pretty hard after I did that video and I've got her all cleaned up again. But now it's time to do the mill. And uh, we're going to also anybody else uh, that might be, excuse me might be new to my videos. My um, I have a disease called pulmonary fibrosis. I'm terminal, and uh, my symptoms come out. Um, I breathe hard. Sometimes I clear my throat a lot. So that's what that will be if it should pop up. But anyways, let's get talk about the mill here and doing the maintenance on it. So I have the head extended. I got the way covers off. I've wiped this mill down and just completely um shop backed it and wiped it down there's no debris on this mill all the ways are wiped dry of oil and debris there's nothing on it the table's clean um yeah we'll do a little stoning of the table in this today as you can see the ways are super clean let me turn this other light on here real quick okay so everything's wiped down remove the way covers okay excuse me so I, I take the way covers off and get to get everything cleaned up real nice and I take a look in here at the saddle ways saddle ways are clean and dry no debris anywhere okay so you're going to clean this clean your clean the mill up really really well uh gotta get better at this thumb button and uh, we go in and we wipe down the bottom the table ways the saddle ways um, we, we're going to take our gibs out, clean them, slide them back in and get them readjusted. We're going to go in and do our backlash adjustments on both the X and Y. Uh, I keep my backlash right around 5,000. Again, we'll stone the table a little bit. I'll show you stoning. Um, something I've talked about in other, other, other videos. My quill's nice and clean. She's already oiled because I keep it daily oiled. And all the oilers got to be hit. So... At this point, what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to paint all my ways with an acid brush and oil. All of them. Saddle ways. Base ways. Bottom of the table ways. The Z ways. We're going to go in and oil our lead screws all the way up. And then we're going to distribute it by moving the table all the way back and forth a couple of times. We're going to move the head up and down a couple of times. Um, y and X travels. Done. Distribute the oil along the lead screws, along the ways. And uh, that'll be pretty much it. There was something else I wanted to show you on the PM30. The PM30, the saddle is hand scraped. I don't know if you can see that. But the saddle is hand, there you go. You can see the scrapes right there. So the saddle on the PM30 is hand scraped. And one thing I do know, oh, excuse me, in that thumb button, is... Um, on the website of the uh, Precision Matthews website, it doesn't say anything about that, but mine is, and it's done on both the bottom of the saddle and the top of the saddle. So the ways are hand scraped, which is an absolute plus in any type of uh, machine tool. Hand scraping is a, uh, a wonderful thing. So anyways, I'm going to get everything oiled up and get the oil distributed. Get all the travels worked up and down, the lead screws distributed. Um, I, I pull my gibs out again, wipe the gibs down, oil them, put them in, readjust them. And uh, then we're going to come back and we're going to talk to you about how well this mill has performed. At this point, I've had the mill a year and a half. May of 24 will be two years. And I don't use the mill, nothing like I use the lathe here. The lathe just gets the hell, hell run out of it all the time. I run the living piss out of that lathe. And I run the I run the mill quite a bit too, but nothing like I run the lathe. So at this point, year and a half of ownership, I'm going to say, and I've had plenty of column mills over my years. I, like I say, I'm a tool maker by trade. So I got quite a bit of machine tool experience. And uh, we're going to go over how well this machine's done. And I'm taking a guess right now. In the year and a half I've had this, this machine my lathe is pushing 4,000 hours in two years over yeah it's two years ownership um little over two years actually mm, excuse me um i think so i think that's what it was on the lathe but anyways um i'm gonna say i probably have maybe 300 hours on this mill in a year and a half 
not 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 a ton of time nothing like the lathe but the mill gets used all the time so let me get it all painted up get the oil distributed and we'll come back and we'll talk about um how well this mill's broke in um and uh and what i think about uh about this mill after a year and a half of ownership i just quickly wanted to show you all how uh this side of the table is also it's a little easier to see the hand scraping on this side of the saddle if anybody knows what hand scraping is this is a great thing to have so the saddle of the pm30 hand scrape bottom and top very nice okay i'm ready to run the head up and down i've already run the table and the x and the y back and forth a couple of times and we'll bring the head up and down now we're going to talk about this machine so here are my papa that's harris and millie millie here is 90 percent pit bull and harris there is 50 percent pit bull um 30 percent Kalahua leopard dog and the rest is what they call super mutt but they're my puppies they come in and visit me and then they stand the door to go back out harris and everybody see ya there you go so i better let them out and we'll get busy talking about this machine so let me show you some stone in here real quick <clears throat> i hope i'm mounting this camera correctly now i've talked about stone in some of my other videos so I got my table nice and wiped down, perfectly clean. I can run my fingers across it and feel for little nicks and burrs. And that's one of the things about keeping an accurate parallel milling machine. Diameter stone. I'm just going to go in here because this is this mill is is stoned on a regular basis. Anytime, uh, uh uh the vice is removed or the dividing heads put up and removed i stone my table die maker stone you go figure eight and you don't press real hard no matter what kind of surface ground finish you have it's going to have still have high and low spots in it i usually do this standing up but way the camera's mounted i can't so we're going to do figure eight all the way across the table Okay. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. Uh, my table stoned so well. This is all I need to do to it. It's done. And depending on which way the light's shining, it looks all scratched up, but it's not. It's soft as silk. Now I'm going to take a rag. Let me get one here. We're going to wipe a little bit of stoning dust off. Again, it won't be much. I know my table's soft. <sighs> but over time, you'll literally bring your table in flatter and flatter. If I show the camera this way, you can see the difference between high and low spots in this table still. And it's smooth and flat as can be. And these are almost unmeasurable. But you can see it when you use a flat die maker stone. A new stone, you'll see difference in shininess and dullness across your table. But my table literally feels soft to the touch when you run your fingers down it. It feels soft. I use a polishing stone at this time, at this point. Um, when I first get my, my, this mill or any machine, I, I go in and uh, fine tune them with stoning gibs, stoning tables. Looking at the ways and looking at the high and low spots anywhere in the machine. And uh, I got a really, really flat milling machine here. It, it, the parallelism in this mill is in, insane for a bit being a column mill. And I've done enough videos in the past that there's plenty of work in there showing me cutting the 10,000th of an inch on it parallel. So she's stoned. Everything's oiled. All the oilers are full. I got to wipe off the excess oil. Anytime you hand oil things and then run your tables, you're going to have some drip. And I got some drip right here that comes out. We're going to wipe that off too. You get in the front here, definitely along the side of the ways. And I wipe all that off. And I'm pretty much done here. This mill is adjusted, it's oiled, everything's oiled. I got the, the wave protectors are back on. Heads up. Uh, quill's good. We're going to run the table down here. 
I mean the head, here in a second. So there you go. Stone in the table. Easy, and it's a practice. It should be done all the time. All the time. Get those die maker stones, stone your table. Okay, let's talk about this machine. Okay, I've got everything distributed, moved back and forth. The oil's nice and it's everywhere. It's beautiful, perfectly clean, adjusted, ready to run roll. So let's talk about this mill. I've had it a year and a half now, and I'm, I took a better thought of this. I keep a log on the lathe, a handwritten log, because I'm on the lathe so much. The mill, I've never bothered. And I got to thinking about it. And I probably used the mill 10% of the time I used the lathe. The lathe is pushing 400, 4,000 hours, excuse me. Um, so the mill is probably pushing between 350 and 400 hours on it since I've had it. Um, nothing like the lathe. But there's been many days where I've been in, on this thing all day long. And uh, many of those days. So I'm just taking a guess off the top of my head. That probably has 350, uh, 400 hours on it. So... At this point, I wrote some things down the board here, so I might be looking off in that, in that direction. When I first got it, the mill, the, the it had, had um, some high and low spots in the Gibbs. Nothing terrible at all. I could just use it, and it would have broke in. Um, but I went ahead and took the Gibbs out when I first got it, and I looked at and I and I look at high and low spots all through my ways and all, and I mess around with stoning and bringing those services in. So I have a very accurate mill. Um, I've done enough videos, uh, the squaring, and even on the, the number two um, upper machine video. Number two, I think it is, is where I machined. Uh, it was actually 11 inches, and I, I had it parallel within. I th it was under half a thousandth, over 11 inches. And at the time, it was about four inches wide before I cut it all down to start the, the upper machine job which i am getting back on it the season's in the next the very next next uh video is going to be the ar upper so anyways um the machine's extremely accurate it had a lot to do with me tuning it and uh today the, the travels are smooth all the way across because i went in and, and stoned my gibbs in flat got all the high and low spots out of them so I have extremely smooth travels everywhere in this lathe. I mean, this mill. Sorry. No, I do that quite often. I'll, I'll call the mill a lathe, the lathe the mill. I, I, I just do that. So if you catch me doing it, I'll just ignore it. But anyways, um, Gibbs are extremely well well adjusted. I have 5,000 backlash adjusted uh, in, my, in my hand wheels on the X and the Y. Um, the Z is not as, easy, as easily adjustable, so I just leave it alone. If, it, if the head moves, the Z drove moves. So it's as accurate as you can possibly get. Um, but anyways, she's smooth as glass everywhere. When I first got the mill, it had a sticking quill. The quill would stick. I could run the quill down. It has three inches of travel. You could run it down, and it would stick. But today... It's broken nice. I mentioned that. I think I mentioned how it broke in very nice. I actually don't remember when it stopped sticking. I just dealt with it. Now it's smooth as glass. I keep that quill oiled and clean. It's smooth as glass. The fine feed works smooth as glass. Accurate. Um, the lead screws on this machine are deadly accurate. And it's delayed the same way. Um, it's an insanely accurate machine. I've had to do a little tuning, like I said, getting tram perfect. But with the work I put into it, I have a fantastic, fantastic mill machine. Um, it broke in very, very well. Uh, all the ways are, are beautifully broken. Um, again, this mill, the, the saddle on this mill, on the bottom and the top of the saddle is hand scraped or hand scraped. Um, beautiful. It's beautiful stuff. Um, okay, I just wrote some things down. Quill, travel, super smooth, accurate screws. And stoning the table, I uh, did a little piece on that in this video. Um, I keep my table beautifully stoned all the time. Um, and my gibbs, my gibbs are completely smooth through the, again, through the length of all the travel. I don't get any tighter, tighter loose spots at all. It, it's perfectly, my, my gibbs drag perfectly all the way through the travels. Um, and that was stoning too. So I'm guessing I got 350 hours on it. Uh, I couldn't be happier with it. Um, there's no real other mill in this kind of category here. When I, when I originally bought this mill, I was not looking at this mill. I didn't want this mill. 
I wanted the bigger mill. Um, I've had a few different common mills over the years. Um, again, I'm a tool maker. Anybody that hasn't seen my videos before, I'm a tool, I'm tool and die. And I'm um, pretty much retired at the moment. Um, I'm terminally ill with fi pulmonary fibrosis and uh, I'm still hanging in there. I'm down to one lung. The left lung is uh, completely scarred. So I'm breathing off of one lung. But I'm getting enough oxygen where I'm still not, not having to put oxygen on all day long. So there's a little update on that for people who have, who have been watching. But uh, again, I couldn't be any hap more happy with this mill. This mill is absolutely... I, I, can't even, I can't even tell you how happy I am with it. This mill is that accurate. It is absolutely done everything I've asked it to do um, and better. Much better than I expected. Both these machines are much better than I expected when I purchased them. I did not expect to get what I got. I got wonderful platforms as I, I, that I was being tool and die. I was able to, to tune my machinery in. And uh, the platforms gave me uh, two wonderful machines that I, I tuned in and I couldn't be happier. I do aerospace work for them all day long, every day, ten thousandths, half thousandths of an inch, all the time, every day. <laughs> that's that's what what I do with these machines. And my videos show that. If you don't, if you want to go back and watch my videos, you haven't seen any, you'll see that. So um, I pretty much hit on everything. I have no. No complaints about this machine right now. None. Not one single complaint. Um, the stand. Oh, yeah. Let's hit on that stand again. The stand's terrible. I have a wood floor in here. I doubled the thickness of the floor. It's an inch and a half thick. Um, but I still get a little bit of wobble in the lathe. I can move the lathe. I can shake it a little bit. And the stand on this is sheet metal on the side. And the legs are thick steel bolted to sh thin sheet metal. So they do this. And the machine will rock. It will rock. It, it, so, but I don't go slamming, slamming uh, hand wheels when, when I'm machining. So I don't have any issue with it whatsoever in accuracy. It does nothing to it. The lathe or the mill, a little bit of movement I have in them affects none of my work. So anyways, um, PM30, 350 hours. Excellent mill machine. It has done the same thing a lathe has. It's just broken in and gotten better and better and better and better. Um, smooth as glass. Uh, the the uh, controls, everything works wonderfully and smooth. Um, the variable speed is awesome. I uh, couldn't be happier with it. I leave the top of it off. Uh, it doesn't get any debris up there. And I pay attention to no, the debris material doesn't end up up on top there where the pulleys are. Because I can change speeds, you can change speeds very fast on this machine. It, it don't take but a couple minutes, and you're you're on the next pulley, and you can literally stay on the high machine. I've had such great torque with this machine that I've left it on the high pulley, and have done some heavy deep cuts, and it it goes right through. You wouldn't even know it was on the high pulley. So, but every so often I move it to the low. Um, when the wet, I, I haven't warmed it up, so I'm not turning it on. I also always warm my machines up. Don't ever forget that. My machines never get used and, and loads placed on, on them until they're warm. I bring, I, I turn them on at a low RPM and let them warm the bearings up and the, and the gears and all that before I use them. And uh, again, every day I oil the oilers on this and the lathe. If I'm using them, the oilers get hit. Um, lathe screws aren't as easy to reach. The Z is pretty easy to get. Um, so I, I uh, oil the lead screws every couple times or when I, when I know I need to. I always keep my stuff always freshly and nicely oiled. Um, never dry. Never. So there you go. Um, I, I can't say one bad thing about this machine. Um, had a few little instant issues with it when I first got it. We got past those very quickly. I have not had a single hiccup with it since, just like the lathe. The lathe is pushing 4,000 hours. Um, it's not there yet. And it's... It's just getting better. This machine doesn't have a lot of time on it at all, and it's wonderful. So there you go. Um, uh, updated review on this machine. Let me think here. Is there anything that I have not been happy with that I'm just not thinking of because it's so small? Um, I can't. I can't. Uh, yeah. I'm happy. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my videos. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you would like to support my channel, and believe me, I could use it. I don't really get any support, and it's tough at times. Um, 
the information's in, in, in the description. I, I appreciate it. Um, please like, share, and subscribe my videos. And the very next video we do is going to be back on the AR upper. We're back to business. Everybody take care of yourselves. Have a great work week.